What comes to mind when I say Australia? You may say kangaroos or shrimps on the barbie. But if I said, what do you think of when I say Australia's most iconic building? I'd put a thousand pounds on it being the Sydney Opera House. With its white sails and stunning location, it's a unique and instantly recognisable landmark around the world, from Albania to Zambia. But its origins weren't as easy going as the Aussie way of life. It's a tale beset with seemingly impossible design challenges and disputes that would shape the face of the project. This is the concise history of the Sydney Opera House. It's time to cast your mind back to the late 1940s and in Sydney a movement was underway. For too long Sydney was held back by its lack of suitable venues for large productions but this was about to change. After extensive lobbying it was decided that Sydney's woes of having performance venues that were too small would be no more. The city would get a new concert hall and the location for it would be on Benelong Point, just north of the central business district, which was living life as a tram depot at the time. Once the location for the concert hall was sorted, it was then time to design it. So a competition was ran in 1957 receiving 233 entries from 32 different countries. The winning design came from a Danish architect who went by the name of Jørn Utzon and his iconic curved roof. After winning the competition, Utzon was then shipped to Sydney to help supervise the project, with the structural engineering for the Opera House being done by renowned British engineer O. Varrick and his team. 1958 was the time to say goodbye to the tram depot with construction on the Opera House beginning in 1959, although Utzon was still working on his final design. The Opera House was to be built in three stages, first the podium, then roof, and finally the interiors. The main stumbling block for the Opera House came when designing the roof, with there being significant design challenges. As the roof was a rather curvy mistress, this added to its complexity. Utzon first thought this could be sorted by using precast in situ concrete for the outer shells of the roof, but this was deemed unfeasible as it was going to cost way too much dollar. It would take four years worth of design iterations, featuring some of the earliest applications of structural analysis using computers before a solution was finally found. All of the curved sections could be created from a single sphere. The design solution allowed for different sections of curved roof, also called ribs, to be cast from a common mould. The sections would then be fitted together to form the roof and would then stay in place by threading cables through the sections and then tensioning them after in a technique called post-tensioning. The shells would then be covered in panels of multiple tiles. 2,400 ribs and 4,000 roof panels were constructed in an on-site factory which would then be fitted together for the roof of the Opera House. Throughout its construction, the Opera House would be subject of controversy and constant argument about its design, construction time and costs. This tension would eventually boil over when subsequent changes to Utzon's design and disagreement with the local government led to Utzon eventually resigning from the project in February 1966, leaving Australia never to return to see the Opera House again. The job would then be passed on to Australian architect Peter Hall, who would see the Opera House to completion. The Opera House was finally completed in 1973, a full 14 years after start of construction, and cost an estimated 102 million Australian dollars, about 900 million dollars in today's money. This was a far cry from the initial estimations, which expected that the Opera House would only cost $7 million and would open in 1963. These initial issues faced by the Opera House haven't held it back though, going on to be a symbol of Australia and an absolute tourist magnet, attracting more than 8.2 million visitors each year. The Opera House was beloved so much that the boffins over at UNESCO would make it a World Heritage Site in 2007 and the project shows the innovativeness of engineering to overcome 
complex problems to build such a unique and timeless structure.